Next.js 13 or Remix? What should you use? Well, that's a good question, but in my opinion, I have a quite good understanding of both frameworks since, for example, I've built in my YouTube uh, channel multiple projects with Remix and Next.js and also for my personal projects, which are not uh, public to YouTube, I've also used both Remix and Next.js, even though I will admit that I've built way um, more complex projects with Remix than with um, Next.js. But still, I think I have a quite good understanding of both frameworks and I think I can compare them quite good since um, I think I've uh, quite an extensive knowledge in both. So I think let's start. And before I say anything, I should also say that this video is not really structured. This will just be a freestyle in that sense. So let's first of all start with the dev speed. So I will say right now, I think Next.js in terms of dev speed is way faster. In my opinion, I can create projects way faster and remix than with Next.js. But is this if better? In my opinion, yes. So with Next.js 13, we recently had this problem that the dev server was very slow. Thankfully, I will have to admit it has been now fixed, at least mostly fixed. There's still a few small things that are still not quite fast, but the Next.js team, the great thing about them is they work on it. So it's definitely getting fixed. But with Remix, I just think the dev server right now is faster. So right now Remix has uh, shipped the V2 um, or the dev server, which um, uses HMR and HDR. If you want to learn more about it, I will link a, a video down below. But in my opinion, right now Remix has done quite a good, uh, quite a few good steps into the future, and with the dev server, I think that's a great thing. Also, just the general framework and the dev speed that I can achieve with the framework, in my opinion, is just way faster with Remix. So Next.js right now uses server components, so the app router, which uh, is quite new with Next.js 13. And even though that's cool, it's great. In my opinion, server components are definitely the future, but that's again also the problem. It's a new thing. Not many frameworks use server components. For example, Hydrogen uh, used server components but migrated off server components since they found server components slow. Also, many packages still don't quite support so, uh, server components. Some do, some don't. And then you have to do the manual work with use client. And even if I do that, sometimes it does not fully work. So that's a bit annoying. Also, of course, this whole mental change. If you if you're coming from Next.js 12, for example, and never had this whole server actions or server components, and never thought about async components or or anything like that, I think the app router is quite I think strange for you since it's it's a big mental change. You don't create any API routes anymore, or sometimes you of course still do, but in most cases you just fetch from the component itself. And that's also why I see many devs quite, uh, right now quite struggling with Next.js 13 since they don't really understand the mental model behind that. That's of course for me a bit easier since before I used Next.js 13 I've been using ex extensively Remix so this whole change was quite easy for me. I already pretty much uh, created actions and loaders so this whole change in the uh, app router uh, was for me quite uh, normal. I, underst I understood what I had to do, but I understand why a lot of other devs are struggling with that. And it's also quite a problem that I have with it. With server components, you have to mark your components as either use client or as use server. And I understand why you have to do that, of course, but it's annoying. So for example, sometimes I forget to mark my component as use client and then I use an uh, use state. Um, to make something, I don't know, so I'm um, use state or hooks or anything like that. And they don't work, of course, because you have to hydrate in the browser and that's why you have to mark your um, component as use client. But I, again, I forget that sometimes and then I save my code, go to my browser and when I'm on my browser, I get an error. But sometimes the error is cryptic. It tells me webpack, something, 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 and I don't really understand it. Then I Google it. Uh, it does not give me any answer. Then I go into my code. Oh, I forgot the use client and I've wasted 10 minutes. So sometimes that's quite annoying. And sometimes the longest bugs are just, oh, you have forgot the use server. Oh, you have forgot to market yes, use client. Or for example, recently I've created an action.ts where I create a few actions and I forgot to mark my um, component at the top as use server. And then it began. I searched for the error and then I found it and 
it was quite annoying in that sense. But again, I understand why you do it, it's just, in my opinion, very annoying. Another thing right now is just this whole marking as stable or marking it as beta or alpha. So you probably know that Next.js 13 or the app router is marked as stable. So the Next.js team pretty much tells you, hey, we think app router is great. We think you should use it. So it's recommended. And that's also when you use the CLI, it recommends you to use the app router. So Next.js tells us the app router is stable, but I wouldn't agree. So right now a pretty recent example of that is caching. So you probably saw the video of Theo or Josh, anybody like that. And I think you saw that caching right now is a big problem. So even though you tell your page, hey, I don't want to cache this page, make it dynamic, Next.js will still cache it. It's weird. And they also made the example with this number. You generate a new random number. And even though you say, hey, don't cache it, it still is being cached. And that's annoying because sometimes I think, hey, I understand Next.js. I understand caching because my god, caching is a different story. But sometimes I really think I understand it. And then I see this video and I don't see it. And then I tell myself, God, I still don't understand it. And maybe I understand it, but it's an annoying bug. I will tell you it like that. I mean, if you tell you the page, hey, don't cache it, you would expect that Next.js would not cache it. But again, it caches it. So it's a weird divergence. So even though you tell the code to do one thing, it does not work and it does another thing. So that's quite annoying. Also server actions, for example, which in my opinion is the way, uh, best way in Next.js to mutate data. And the thing with that is it's still an alpha. Maybe it's in beta right now. I'm not really up to date, but uh, we, when I used it recently, it was still an alpha. And I think two months ago, or maybe one month ago, I can't quite remember, I tried to use Resend. And Resend is a package provided by the Resend team, and Resend is an email provider. So it was just an NPM or a node package to make uh, email link work. And I tried to use it in a server action to create, I don't even remember what it was, I think in hello email or something like that, and it wouldn't work. The Resend package was not compatible with the server actions and it has been fixed everything is right now great it works but it's still annoying so yeah i mean that's again the annoying thing the next share team recommends you to use the app router tells you it's stable but the underlying tech under the app router is better alpha or just does not work so that's weird and that's the great thing with Remix. Remix right now makes the move to V2, and with that they created a few new features, the new dev server, flat routing, um, I think the new error boundary, a few more things. Uh, I don't really care about them, but the two new things which are important in my opinion is the dev server and the flat routes. And the great thing with that is that Next.js uses flags. So for me, for example, I don't like the new flat routing system. I hate it actually. So when I create my personal projects, which I don't share on YouTube, I just use the V1 convention. Since I just feel, think it's way, uh, way more natural, I just like this whole folder and then create your route inside of that, this whole grouping. Even though I saw a lot of thing, uh, people don't like it, I like the V1 convention more than the V2 convention with flat routes. And that's a great thing with Remix. I can tell Remix, hey, I don't want to use this new V2 routing. Give me the V1 routing. So all I do is set the flag to false. Uh, and I use the V1 routing. With Next.js, you're not able to do that since the app router right now is in that sense V1 and you can't use the pages router. And again, with the pages router, you can't use nested routing. So yeah, you're kind of obliged to use the app router. You can't do anything else. So that's the great thing with um, Remix, the f uh, routes, uh, the flags, and even though Next.js also has them, um, it's still annoying that a lot of things just don't work. With Remix, everything that I use or which is important to me, so loaders, actions, they just work. Uh, I don't have any alpha states or anything, they work. Also, also I mean, <laughs> God, the funniest example. Next.js has this use form status, I think, or not Next.js, but React has this hook. Use form status, I think that's how it's called. Uh, with that, you get the pending state. You would think, I mean, that's a very basic thing. You need that. You would think it's marked as stable, right? No, it's experimental. Like, oh my God, it's just a pending state. Mark it as stable, make the API just stable and leave me alone. 
but no, it's still in a beta or an experimental, however they name it. It's just annoying, since the app router in that sense is stable, everything works, but everything that's underlying on that is not stable. So yeah, I hate that, I will tell you like that, even though I'm sure app routers knew they have to create a, a lot of new things, it's still annoying. In my opinion, the app router should still be in beta, and only once it's really is finished, I think then they should only mark it as stable. So definitely I think they right now they were way too fast to mark it as stable. And that's also why they got a bit of hate for that. Since people used it, they ran into back uh, into box and even though the next shares team tell, told them it's stable and everything works, it didn't work. Another thing I want to talk about is just learning the framework. In my opinion, next shares, even though it's had, it has a lot of bugs, it's easier to learn, and I will tell you why. Next.js has way more people trying, or way more resources in that sense, to explain your concepts of Next.js. With Remix, my biggest pet peeve is that I don't have a lot of resources to learn about Remix. Sure, I have the docs, I have Jacob, which has created a great uh, blog, or Sergio, who also has a great blog. But in terms of blog articles or YouTube videos, there is just not enough. If I search something for Next.js, I will find an answer, mostly. With Remix, it's a bit harder. Sometimes I find something on the internet, something, uh, sometimes not. Then I have to go in the Discord, search for there. Sometimes I have an answer there, sometimes not. So the problem with Remix is, even though it's a great framework in my opinion, it just does not have the same resources in the sense of learning. People will find it much easier to learn Next.js since there are a lot more YouTube videos. For example, that's also a problem with Remix 1. Uh, with Remix, uh, you don't have any YouTube tutorials. Um, there are a few, but they are already outdated since they are for V1, uh, for the V1 convention of Remix, not the V2 convention. So yeah, that's the biggest problem uh, with in terms of learning Remix. If you're new to web development, in my opinion, you will have a bit of a harder time than with Next.js since there are way less uh, learning resources in my opinion. But again, the great thing with Remix is for example in the docs they have this um, uh, jokes tutorial in which you learn almost everything, authentication, routing, fetching, uh, actions, everything like that which is great, which you don't have with Next.js. But again, Next.js has all of these YouTube videos, uh, blogs, um, tutorials and everything like that. So that's the second thing. The third thing is I guess, deployment. Uh, the great thing with Remix is you're not locked into a deployment uh, target. Remix works with almost every deployment partner that there is. So Vercel, Netlify, Cloud for Pages, uh, Fly.io, um, Heroku, if you want to, it will also work. So in that sense, everything works. With Vercel, it's a bit harder, or with Next.js, it's a bit harder, since, for example, you have image optimization. And image optimization only works on Vercel. So if you want to deploy to fly.io, uh, image optimization again does not work. Also, this whole caching thing is a bit harder. It does not work everywhere. I had a few problems with uh, Next.js 13 and fly.io. It did not really work. So the great thing with Vercel is it works 100% with uh, Next.js. It works perfectly. And they are like two partners in heaven, and that's sure because Vercel created Next.js. But the problem with Vercel is, even though it's a great product, it really is. I love Vercel, but they are very, very expensive once you scale. So for most users or for most people that uh, watch my videos, they don't really care, since they will never get more than ten users, which is no disrespect. It's just an observation. Uh, so most people don't really care about that. But once you scale to a few thousand users, you'll think about that. And you will see that with Next.js, it will be way harder to migrate off Russell to a different deployment target, since you will have to do a lot of uh, annoying work. You won't have to do that with Remix, but again, you can deploy both uh, projects or both frameworks to different deployment targets. In my opinion, or in my experience, it's just way harder with Next.js, but it works. Another thing I see a lot of people talk about is speed, and I will be quite honest, I can't talk about it, since I have never tested both frameworks in, ter in terms of speed. I saw a few t Twitter comments which um, compared Nux.js, so the Vue framework with Next.js, and I saw that Vue uh, or Nux.js is faster than Next.js, and 
it could be true. I don't know. I have never tested it, so I can't talk about it really. But when I deploy both projects, so we mix on XJS, in my opinion, both are equally fast. Maybe one is faster, maybe not, but I don't really see the difference there. Both are fast enough in my experience. Both uh, almost always create uh, those, uh, those 100 scores on the page index speed. So in my opinion, a lot of people talk about this whole speed thing. I think they are both fa fast enough. Both are equally fast. So I wouldn't really mark my um, opinion on top of speed. So in terms of speed, use both again. Uh, it does not really make a difference in my opinion. And now we'll come to the last point and the question, which is the video. Should you use Remix on Next.js? And I would say it like that. I think you should use both. So I've used both and that's why I also have an opinion on both. But as someone like you, I think you should also test out both. So on my YouTube channel, I have videos for both frameworks. I think you should go through them and just see what you like better. I will personally for myself in production uh, projects still use Remix. Uh, I like it more and maybe this opinion also comes from that I use Remix way longer than Next.js 13. But for my production projects which are private, so no YouTube projects, I will still use Remix. But for YouTube I will still create projects with Next.js 13. But again, both frameworks are great. I think both work, both do their job great. Some things are not so nice with Next.js in my opinion, but they are definitely manageable. So in my opinion, use whatever you like, test out both. I will use Remix, I will use Next.js, I will use both. But to make your own opinion, definitely try out both. Uh, try both uh, projects which are marked inside of the docs of both frameworks and just see how it works. Or just, in my opinion, create a blog project. Create a blog with Next.js and create a blog with Remix. I have two tutorials on that on YouTube. Check them out. I think even such a small project will already tell you a lot about which is better. So yeah, definitely try it out. And with that, I hope you enjoy your day and bye.